Hey guys, Bakula here. I'm gonna give you a video. Um, got quite a bit to go over here, guys. Um, I've had some questions and stuff that's been asked that I, I'm gonna try to answer a couple of them um, as best I can, anyway. As far as what we're looking at and what would happen in certain situations, um, and this video may go, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little longer. I'm not sure. I'm gonna try to keep it as short as I can, but I got a lot I need to talk about here um, because there's a lot. Frankly, guys, there's a lot going on, and it's just getting more and more. I mean, every day it just seems like it doubles. <laughs> but um, anyway, guys, um, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and jump into it. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about, guys, is this, okay? What you're looking at here, guys, is a actual sign that was hung in a Walmart, okay? These signs started showing up probably about a week, week and a half I don't know, maybe close to two weeks ago. And I hadn't spoke about it because I thought it was pretty much just a, I don't know, maybe like a regional thing, but it's not. Okay. Uh, my wife came home about a week ago and was telling me that she's seen these, these signs hanging in Walmart about these canned goods. Okay. And then all of a sudden, bam, it was all over the place. Um, I may have mentioned this in a previous video. I'm not really for sure. But. Um, what's causing these okay it says due to poor harvest season we are experiencing shortages on many of our canned vegetable items we hope to be back in stock on most items by the end of august okay now poor harvest season I mean, we could talk about that all day long what's causing all that what's doing this what's doing that well you know if you're here watching my channel the basis of what i talk about obviously you know that i believe that it has something to do with what's what's going on in our solar system okay um it's changing our weather patterns we've talked about that with the jet streams just going crazy 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 signatures on those um scott had brought that to my attention a, a, i don't know five six months back and did a few videos on them um i believe i did a video on it um and there's a lot of people out there doing videos you know bp earth watch did did some on it um and many others but the jet streams are not normal, okay? They're far from normal. Matter of fact, they're dang, dang near chaotic, okay? Um, so what's causing all that? Well, there's a whole lot of different things. And I'm not going to go into, into that in this video, but um, the weather change is what's causing these shortages on our, you know, th this is something that we're going to experience firsthand, guys. This isn't something that we just, you know, we talk about, hey, this might happen in 5, 10 years. Well, this is happening right now, okay? Um, those of us that live over here in what they would call the Western world haven't really experienced this. Um, you know, maybe some of the older people, uh, you know, 60 or above may have at some point. You know, I remember some shortages when I was a kid, but it wasn't nothing, no, nothing nowhere near about what we're getting ready to see. Okay, it wasn't like rationing like they had back during some of the world wars and, and stuff like that, okay, during the Great Depression and, and all those kinds of things. So, you know, this may be new for a whole lot of people, and this could shock especially young people. They're not going to know how to handle this, okay? Now, uh, you know, there's how I live my life. No fear, no drama, okay? Um... You know, I put that there for a reason because I don't want any fear. You know what I'm saying? All we can do is teach, especially our younger people, hey, you know, sometimes we're not going to have our technology. All right? Things aren't just push button. Because eventually we're going to get that event that's going to cause all that to go away. And they're not going to know what to do. So it's up to us to teach them that. Um, it's not the end of the world when you see things like this. There's other things, there's other ways to deal with this. Is this good? Absolutely not. Okay, is this going to make everybody's job harder to, you know, yes, it is. But are we, is it going to be the end, end all of end all? Probably not, guys. Okay, um, this could be the start of something bigger. Um, don't know. But, you know, let's just keep it. Let's, let's let's bring it down a notch is what I'm saying because if we go straight to the worst case scenario then we're not doing anybody any good okay 
Um, people get fear. People get, you know, when, when, when they get fearful, they just get scatterbrained. And they don't know what to do. So let's, let's kind of, you know, try to keep this here in a little bubble here, okay? <laughs> um, let's not let this get too crazy when we're talking about stuff like this. Um, we need to bring it to everybody's attention so they know this is happening. But we also don't need to go crazy. So, anyway, that is happening, guys. You know, if you guys go to the store, you're going to see start seeing these signs. These were in Walmarts, okay? This isn't some little local grocery store. This is, yeah, these are big chains. So, you're talking, you know, this this, this could get pretty bad, um, you know, but there's other ways to handle stuff. So, that's why I've always encouraged people to try to have their own gardens and stuff like that because, you know, eventually one of these times you might have to use it and not just for, you know, entertainment purposes or just because you like gardening. It might be something you need to do to keep yourself healthy and alive, uh, you know, at some level. But anyway, you know, I'm going to say this one more time. No fear. Don't fear that. Okay. There's not, there's no fear there. All right. I mean, we don't fear stuff we can't control. I always say that. It's what I teach my kids. So, but anyway, also heat wave guys, um, this is happening right now. Um, you know, we, here where I live, we had the remnants of uh, tropical storm or hurricane. I'm not sure if we got up to hurricane strength or not. Barry. Um, actually it was kind of an underachiever, at least here where I'm living, as far as rainfall. Um, they expected a lot more rain and we didn't get all of that rain. But what was different about it this time, guys, is the heat came right behind it. Um, and during it, it really never got any relief from heat. So, you know, you're looking at this map right here. This came off the of Weather Channel, obviously. Um, anybody can, you know, go look at your own regional areas. But this is supposed to happen here you know it's happening currently it's going to last four or five days okay so yeah go check on the old people um, older people and go check on you know anybody that has disabilities that can't really fend for themselves to to what a normal person could do um, make sure everybody has those resources they need to stay cool to stay hydrated is one of the biggest things okay can't stress this enough because you know i remember i told you guys i wasn't feeling very well this past week well um old blue kool-aid here had a heat stroke um <laughs> uh yeah i don't this is actually the first time i've talked about it out loud here but um yeah it can happen you know i work outside and i'm outside a lot so you know i was out in that heat i thought it was an ear infection so did my doctor but my test came back. I don't have any like elevated white counts or my sed rate level. If anybody knows what that is, um, it wasn't elevated. So they don't think it was actually infection in my ears or infection anywhere. Um, I did have some muscle muscle control loss in my right my right eye, I guess you could say. I was having a massive pain back there. I was vomiting, nausea. I still am every time I stand up. Um, but yeah, guys, so it, that can happen, you know, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm, over, I'm my mid forties, so it's not like I'm extremely old or anything. So it's, it, this can happen to anybody is what I'm trying to say. So just, just pay attention and do what you can. Um, you know, I know it's, some of these rules they talk about is kind of annoying. Okay. But sometimes when we are dealing with stuff like this, we have to heed what they say, even though it might be inconvenient. So, anyway, I wanted to talk about that for a second there. And, and then that kind of leads me into this, okay? Um, I did a video, and this was the thumbnail for it. Now, why do they keep hiding the truth here, okay? This was a screenshot. It says, the Earth's ozone layer absorbs the UVC radiation in solar energy, okay? So, it does not present any threat. You guys hear that? Does not present any threat. All right, this was, I, I got this straight up off of Google, this this uh, article here. Okay, this is what mainstream was telling everybody. All right, UVA and UVB radiation does not reach, um, as I say, UVA and UVB radiation does not reach the Earth's surface and is believed to have long and short-term adverse effects on the eyes and vision. Um, so... Basically, what they're saying here, guys, if you read this, it says the 
the ozone layer, okay, the ozone layer is supposed to absorb all the UVC. So they're saying it's not even a threat. Well, let me tell you something. If you guys go over and watch Mr. MBB3's channel, UVC is being picked up on the surface now and has been for about two years, and it's increasingly getting larger. Okay? The numbers we're seeing keep getting bigger. So, what that, does that mean? Well, what that means is either our atmosphere is not blocking like it should be, which is probably part of it, in my opinion, or... And to go along with it, UVC can come from artificial sources. Okay, it's very similar to the UVC you would get off like a, a welder's burn or tanning bed lights from the old days. They don't, I don't think they use them anymore like that. But um, UVC will attack you at the DNA level. Okay, this is something that makes people very, very sick if they have prolonged exposure to it. This is why I'm talking about it. Because no sunscreen will protect you from UVC. Okay? Let that sink in. Okay? No sunscreen will protect you from UVC. Only thing you can do is cover your skin. Now, I know it sucks when it's hot. But anybody that's out in the sun right now, I mean, most people will tell you, hey, yeah, it's more intense than what it used to be. Okay? But what I'm trying to tell you guys now is that Cover your skin. I mean, do yourself a favor. You might not see any, any results right away or any kind of bad effects if you don't right away. But in the future, you will. I promise you. Okay? Now, I, this, this came from the same article, okay? This article was written back in early 2000s, I think. So, it, it tells you all about this. You know, UVA, 95% of the UV radiation that reaches the Earth's surface is UVA. Okay, they use it in tanning beds. It says here, you guys can read all that. Okay, it said it penetrates the second layer of skin, contributes to some types of sun damage, um, causes wrinkles. Okay, yeah, so what about wrinkles? But um, it says it penetrates clouds and glass windows. Um, and it says always use sunscreen. Okay, yeah, well, we've known that since we were, you know, <laughs> very, very small. Then you go to UVB. It says it affects the top layer of skin. All right, causes most sunburn. So when you guys get sunburnt, it's basically from UVB. Okay, um, it's linked strongly to skin cancer. Damages DNA in your skin. Okay, um, and it says burns unprotected skin in as little as 15 minutes. Um, we can go in to show some pictures. I'm not going to because they're rather disturbing. They really are. Then it says right here. Okay, remember when this thing was written way back here. This is UVC does not reach the earth's surface absorbed by atmosphere they're telling you that straight up okay it says is not normally considered a risk factor for skin cancer why because it's not supposed to hit us it's not supposed to get to us it says is found in man-made sources of uvc radiation mercury lamps like we were talking about welding torches it says it's used in tanning beds in the past. Okay, they don't use it like that anymore in the past. I mean, in, in, anymore, it was just used in the past. So keep that in mind, guys. UVC is now getting picked up on the surface. Go check out Mr. MBB3's channel. They have their network of people, and they show it every day, or like three times a week or something like that. But, yeah, go check that out. I'll leave a link. But, yeah, so on to Dutch. Okay, everybody knows who Dutch Sense is, right? This all comes into play on what we talk about here on my channel anyway. This is uh, something he posted, okay, yesterday. Um, and this was really odd, okay? And I, I'm going to explain to you the situation and how it happened. Because I even was texting Scott back and forth, and he was like, well, what did Dutch say? What, how did this all... Well, what it ended up being was he didn't see the post, and I did. And it wasn't... They didn't show this. They were trying to censor it at some level. Okay? Um, I'm not going to go into big details on that. But I can just tell you what happened, you know, in sequence of what happened with when I posted this on our Facebook group. Okay? I posted this, right? And this is, the Dutch posted this on YouTube. It was just a post. It wasn't a video. It was just something he posted. Hey, you know, here's an alert, guys. We have a hot spot. Okay, what he was talking about is 
if you look right here in this box, and it's, you can't really see it on this capture, but inside this box, if you were to zoom in, you would see a little red spot start coming up. Okay, and what that was is it was magma. Okay, off the coast of Oregon. Well, what's close to Oregon and Washington off the coast there? Cascadian subduction zone. That's probably the biggest thing that we've talked about, at least here on my channel. Then you can go, you, this all ties in down to the earthquakes and stuff we've been having in, in California also. Okay, now what was weird, okay, I'm sitting here and I have, I was doing some of uh, this surfing on the net here on my phone, and I had Dutch Sense live feed, and what he does is he plays, he just has a live feed going so people can chat, and he has the globe there going, and when, that, when an earthquake pops off, most of us have heard it, it dings. However many times it dings is the strength of that earthquake. Well, so I'm sitting here, and I, and I hear it ding. It's not unusual because we get a lot of earthquakes now. We hear it dinging all the time. And I hear it ding five times. I'm sitting there thinking, oh, man, that was a five. That's a five-pointer. That's a decent-sized earthquake. Where was it at? Well, it never showed up. They never put it up there in the, in, in the feed. And I, I thought, man, that was strange. You know, even the chat started talking about it. Where did this hit? Where did this happen? What was going on? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it all happened or whatever. But today they did, there was an earthquake, and I'll just show it to you. Right here. It's a 5.4. Um, it happened, and this wasn't the one I heard ding, okay? When I heard ding, I think what ended up being in like a Tonga or something. But for whatever reason, they didn't post that one right away. And I don't know why. It was very strange. But anyway, you see this right here. Um, this is off the coast of Oregon. Um, it was a 5.4. The depth of it was 10 kilometers, which is very shallow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you guys can see these lines, okay? That's the Cascadian subduction zone right in there, okay? And obviously, here's the, the active area down here in California, okay? So, you know, that happened. So, we got to pay attention to this. That's a, that's a decent-sized earthquake off the coast of Oregon, and I think... I think Dutch was saying it was the in biggest one there in months, like six, eight, ten months, something like that. Okay, so I mean that's significant, guys. All right, so I clicked on this red dot here too, and I just what that was. Guess what? That was a a 4.6 right there in California, and this was just I don't know an hour or two ago, guys. Okay, and right now it's about uh, one eastern a.m. where i'm at okay so you can look at utc there it happened at 3:59 on the 18th so yeah this was about an hour ago this just happened so i mean that's it that is a significant quake now what's even more crazy look at the depth 2.3 kilometers that's dang near on the surface okay um yeah i don't know what's going on i Man, there's so much stuff going on in that part of the country, it's crazy. I even seen some weird radar signatures that one of the YouTube channels was showing here. It was like flipping like almost like... He was trying to say it was an EMP, possibly. Um, I don't know if that's the case or what have you, but it just like blipped on the radar. And it was very, very strange. I have to say I've not seen nothing like it, but I, I can't say what it is either. So I'm not going to go into that. But yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here, guys. Then you got this, okay? Now, what this is, is this is the European GPS. This is an article that was written. Uh, when was this one written? I can't remember. It was like a day or two ago. Okay, since the 11th, the GPS system in Europe has been down. They call it the Galileo system. It was supposed to be better than the United States military-controlled system. Um, they were using it over there, but it went down. Well, they were trying to give us some technical reasons on why it happened and why it's doing this. Well, it was still down last I looked. At least at some level, it was still down. You guys know where I'm going with this, okay? Most of you guys probably know what I'm going to say. So, yeah, they launched this whole system up. I think it was 2016. They started beta testing it or what have you. But I guess it's worked fairly well. I don't know. 
But when, when this system goes down, they, they revert back and they start using our system. So that's going to slow and bottleneck everything that we do. So if you guys have been experiencing any of those slowdowns, that's probably why. Especially when we're talking about GPS. Okay. Um, not to mention that we've been getting these crazy solar. I don't even know. I don't even know if I want to call them solar. This crazy disruptions in our magnetosphere. That, in my opinion, most of it's not coming from the sun. The sun has something to do with it, but it, there's other magnetic fields involved there. Anyway, we'll read this real quick. You know, it says right here, its own satellite navigation system. Blah blah blah. Um, most of the European navigation system, known as Galileo, that's what they call their system, has been out of use since Thursday. Okay, that was the 11th. Um, it says, the latest mishap to befall the program since it began running in a pilot phase in late 2016. Okay, um, that's where it's at. Okay, um, so yeah. I think it has something to do, because that's when we started seeing those crazy disruptions was the day before that on our magnetosphere. So I think some of that stuff was affecting those satellites. That's my opinion, okay? Um, obviously, I have some observational evidence for that. I can show you the magnetosphere on those dates and times and all those kinds of things, and I guarantee you that we were getting hit with some stuff there. Um, and it was, it was pretty significant because our magnetosphere was actually reacting, you know, pretty crazy like. So, you know, anyway, I wanted to bring that up, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about, guys, is I get a lot of questions on what would happen, what does happen to our magnetosphere and magnetopause when we get hit with the next flare, sizable one. Um, with a solar flare, I'm sorry, or a CME, a sizable CME. Okay, the first one that, that came to my mind to be able to go back and look at would have been the September 11th one back in 2017. Okay, but it's hard to find information on that because I think what happened was, at least the stuff that I've seen, um, those satellites got thrown into safe mode because it was such a, a, a massive hit. Um... So I don't think we have much data on that as far as what the magnetosphere actually did. But I did find something else, okay? Back in July of that same year, roughly about a year, two years ago from now, we did take a hit, okay? Now, how do I know we took a hit? Well, what I did was is I found this on our magnetopause models, okay? And then... I went back three to four days and looked at the sun and looked at the reports. And yes, there was two flares that came off of the sun that day. Three or four days before we got these reactions. And I'm about to show you this. Now, this is exactly what would happen if we got hit today. And these weren't even like huge, huge ones. These were like middle class. These weren't small ones, okay? Because you're going to see. But these, these were not huge ones. So, let me, uh, I'll just push play here and we'll, we'll let it run here. Now, again, guys, you know, most of us have probably not seen this because this is going to look crazy. All right. Obviously, you see that. I mean, that's just nuts. Okay, and then you see it starting to recover. All right, that was a span of about an hour or two. Now, check this one out. What I found interesting about that one was if you looked at that, you, you, you're going to notice that the energy almost went from here and like pushed our bow shock that way. Our bow shock that way. It's crazy. Um, let's back that up a little bit and just push play. All right. Here we go. Watch it. See it? Boom. And then watch this. I mean, this is just nuts. Then it like goes away. It's like we're swirling, man. I've not seen. I mean, I've seen crazy stuff on this before. But this was before I really started getting into uh, reporting on this and really digging into the data. Now this one's going to show you some stuff that really looks kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean it is. It's nuts. Look at this. This is what this is what did happen during one of the flares when it hit us. Okay. 
Look at that. Look how chaotic it gets. Obviously, guys, when it does that, we have no protection. So whatever's hitting us from any other direction or any direction at all at that point is getting to the surface of the earth. Okay, you guys can clearly see that that, you know, that was something that was, uh, I just wanted everybody to see that, okay, because, you know, I get a lot of questions on that. What what What's it going to do? What's it going to look like when we react? Okay, well, that's that's what it will look like, okay? Um, I hope that helps you guys, you know, kind of understand that. And this is why we talk about what we talk about, because when this does happen, one of these times, like back in 2012, our magnetopause actually did completely reverse for a time. And I did a video on that, okay? Um, there's a lot of data on it, but most of the data is missing. The data that we do have is the stuff that we, we recorded and, and caught ourselves. Okay, you can't really go back and, and see the data on their databases. So, you know, they tried to, basically, they tried to scrub that from the net. And I've talked about this before. But then again, guys, you know, it, it, that is what it is. So, you know, what we're going to do here real quick, guys, is we're going to uh, go on over here to uh, ISWA, and we're going to just take a gander of what we're, what we're looking at right now, real time. Okay? Um, I was seeing some stuff, guys, and here's the thing. We're not supposed to really be having much of any kind of disruptions right now. Okay? They're not predicting anything like that, but yet we're still seeing them. This has been happening now for two weeks. So what what does that mean, right? Well, it means that we're being influenced by multiple different magnetic fields. Okay, we've been talking about this. Okay, this is really the only way that this can happen. Now I'm going to hit, I'm just going to start loading these while I, while I uh, yeah, see, did you see that? I guarantee you we're going to see some, man, I don't even know if I want to look at this. <laughs> um yeah, because I, I haven't looked at this yet, so you're going to look at it first time with me here. So, um, I do look at this constantly. You guys know I do. Um, but yeah, by judging by this, guys, I can tell, oh my gosh, look at that. We just, I mean, even that first couple frames there, I can tell you right now, we just got hit with something. Um, yeah. And I'll take you guys over to that model and I'll show you guys that this should not be happening. Um, at least according to them, this should not have this should not be happening right now. Um, their models, that even their predictive models, um, they're uh, are not showing anything like this. Okay, and what do I mean? Well, they're not showing much increase in the solar wind or plasma density. Okay, because that's usually where the disturbances come from. That's what makes them strong, is the combination of both of those. Alright, so what we'll do is, this one's probably already loaded, I would think. Let's just, yep, this one's loaded. So, I'm going to pause it here. We're going to just, I'm just going to grab the toolbar. We'll take a gander at it here, okay? Um, let's just run it back. Okay, you're seeing, now, see guys, I mean, right off the bat, I mean, we can just tell there's massive energy right here. We're getting squeezed like an egg already. That really hasn't changed. That's been like that for a while now. So we're under pressure. Okay. And what I'm saying is, guys, I think this is really one of the main factors on why we're having so many earthquakes. Now, what I found interesting, if you look right here, we're just in the frame of four, four, eight, twelve minutes. This pressure actually shifts up here. Okay. So what causes that? Did the solar winds switch that fast? Most likely not. What can switch that fast? Think about that logically. How fast does electricity move? Okay, electricity is directly related to magnetism. See where I'm going with this? Magnetic fields can move stuff, energy, coming from a, one direction to another very, very quickly. Okay, so when it does that to that, that fast, you know, and then, then it does, the whole thing just gets red. Look at it. Okay, I've, I've been seeing this a lot too. This has really been actually kind of bothering me. 
you guys see this really I know most people wouldn't see that light line but that's been showing up okay this is a two-dimensional model okay we're looking at this from the side all right I'm sorry from the top all right this is the satellite line so when we see these little what I'm going to call ripples sometimes we'll see them here and you'll see them travel like this direction basically what it's doing is it's like it's going around a ball okay it's basically it's coming over the top of earth and going out the back side okay I hope you guys can understand that just think of this as if you know I guess if you're holding it holding a ball in your hand and something goes over hits it on the right side well it's got to come up and over to go to the left which is exactly what this energy has to do okay so when we see those little anomalies like that we have to keep that in mind that it isn't necessarily just moving from left to right okay or right to left or whatever you want to say now see how that just it just keeps doing it and we start seeing this is something we're seeing a lot of this same signature and I've not seen this before look at that on the back side there see that okay so we'll just keep moving here keep going and obviously you see that big red there on the bottom left all right obviously this is yeah I mean we're getting look at that okay you can even see our shield here just bend right in um, that happened right at the switch of the day here okay and look at that now you see this this right here is this is a, a good example Watch the red here, how it goes here, and then it'll just shoot right off the back. That's a telltale sign. We got hit for something in the front or something down that direction, and then it just shot right off right off the end. See that? Okay. Then it rebuilds. Okay. We get compressed, and we do rapid expansion like I've talked about before. Um, it looks like we're going to, yep. You see that little flash? If you guys ever see that flash, most likely we got smacked with something. Okay, I just want to tell you that. See how there's hardly any energy showing right here? Well, it's because we got hit. Okay. I want you guys to look at the time, the time stamp right here. Okay. That says 514. This just happened, guys, not too long ago. <laughs> okay. This is I'm showing you this for the first time as I'm looking at it. So that was at 514, and it should be four minutes later. 518. You see how we're compressing? Okay, now as soon as it decides it wants to push back, we're going to see rapid expansion. I haven't looked at this, mind you. I, I'm just going to tell you that's probably what it's going to do. And it's going to smash out. And you're going to see a lot of energy real fast. Yep, see that? So we go from 518, looking like that, we got compressed, to 522, and look at that. See, we're pushing out. Okay, you think of it like this, guys. It's like you're holding a firecracker in your closed hand. You like the fuse. And it compresses. It pulls in, right? Well, then when that thing explodes, what happens? Well, it goes out in all directions. Not just one. That's exactly what's happening here. That's why we see rapid expansion. Okay? Just so you guys know. Now, again, you know, this might not be some big huge event or nothing like that but you're, you're seeing that rapid expansion right there and if we go look at the other models here in a second i'll show you that we'll see compression on our bow shock i guarantee it see that boom look at that boom okay so let's look at it here yeah i can yeah see that <laughs> We'll just run through this real fast because this isn't something that I mean, you're seeing okay something else too you see out in the front see our our imf lines the blue lines here guys are the ones that connect us to the sun when, they, when you start seeing those things go all crazy you got to really pay attention because those are our connections to the sun and other objects other celestial objects so when you start seeing them poke this direction it shouldn't really do that Okay, and we kind of see that a little bit there. Um, sometimes you'll see them pile them up out in the front too. Okay, so we'll go here. Okay, that right there is kind of a normal looking picture if anybody was ever captured, if anybody ever wanted to know. 
Okay? That's pretty normal right there. But watch what happens. We see, see lines start going crazy, IMF lines, and then look at that. Now here's that wave. You see that coming from the right to the left? Boom. See that? That's when we got hit. See? I knew that's what it was as soon as I looked at it. See the red coming? Bam. We compress. See the swirling out back? And then... We expand back out, and that's where we're at right now, okay? So, yeah, that's exactly what happened. We just got hit with something. I mean, I'm not saying it was something huge, but it definitely was something that we'll take a look at it here. This will give us some solar wind speed. If you guys look up here, that's indicative of the solar wind speed, kilometers per second. We'll see if it increases much. 781, that's... You know, it's not extremely high, but it's high enough, man. You get the six there. Okay, here's the big hit. You see it start moving, and then boom. I wonder where it got up to. 741, that was pretty high. But yeah, guys, and there's other stuff that we've been seeing that we're going to talk about later. Me and Scott have been talking about, um, you know, what's actually going on here, what some of these other models are showing, how they show it. Electrons is, is coming into the conversation here, just to give you a little uh, snippet there. Um, but yeah, yeah, guys, I mean, that's what's going on right there in our magnetosphere. So, you know, guys, um, again, no fear, no drama, okay? Um, don't fear it. Just don't. Don't fear something you can't control. Okay? All we can do is be aware of what's going on around us. And then we can prepare a little bit. We don't have to go crazy with that either. But we just have to be aware. If you guys think about it, where your fear comes from, where does it come from? It comes from not knowing. Okay? So that's why we try to know. So we don't have that fear. Things are so much worse when we get blindsided, right? That's what the whole big thing that they say that they don't want to do to us is drop all this stuff on us at once because they think we'll go crazy. Well, this is the reason why. So, if we try to get as much knowledge as we can, it will bring down that fear level. Plus, if we know we can't control it, what is the sense of fearing it? It does absolutely no good. It just doesn't, guys. So, you know, let's go, let's do our research, let's do this, and let's, sh let's share it with everybody. Maybe we can bring some of that anxiety level down, you know. Is something going to happen tomorrow? Most likely not. Is something going to happen in a year? Who knows? Next month? Okay, but what I do know is that our solar system is not acting like it's supposed to. Okay, our, our magnetopause and magnetosphere is one of the biggest indicative signatures that we're seeing right now that is saying, hey, something's wrong. Okay, because even if it was just solar wind, it still shouldn't be acting the way that it does because they can't explain where the solar wind's coming from. Because we're getting this, these, these disruptions and there's no massive coronal holes. None of that stuff where, that they say that's where the stuff comes from. Because it does. True solar wind comes from there. Okay? Coronal holes. It's a stream of ions coming at us. Okay? So, just kind of keep that in mind. That's why we talk about it. There's other magnetic fields involved here that they're not wanting us to know about and we're coming up with theories we're coming up with observational evidence we're coming up with all kinds of different stuff now guys that is just showing that something is different whatever that is all right so let's just let's just stay the course share our information and you know go on with it guys so uh god bless Yeshua saves and uh you can drink this kool-aid